Hey guys, welcome. Fedora 39 Workstation. Today I'm going to talk about, uh, well, some concepts regarding backups. You know, if you are wanting to install grsync, rsync is already installed on your system. Uh, we can do simple backups all the way to advanced. In this video, I'll start with uh, something for new users using graphical rsync for backing up your personal folders into uh, either a internal hard drive or external hard drives or USB sticks. I'm going to be showing an external hard drive and an internal hard drive in this uh, video and I'll also show you advanced concepts toward the end where you have automation involved where it automatically during login process copies your personal folders and also removes files from those personal folders if you have removed them. It syncs them file for file, folder for folder. If you're interested in any of this kind of information, then I would encourage that you watch the video in its entirety. This will definitely be more than 15 minutes. And I do encourage that you subscribe if you don't have time to watch it in one sitting. Filming in 1920 by 1080. You can adjust your YouTube player accordingly. You are watching this on Linux for Seniors. You can subscribe if you like. Got 290 videos and growing and all my videos are keyword indexed. Let's talk about the simplest tool you can use. Graphical rsync, grsync. I did not find it in the store, but I installed it through terminal. So I'm gonna punch up clear and make my box a little bit bigger and give you the uh, history buffer so you can have the command for installing. Pseudo DNF install is the standard command to install anything. grsync is graphical rsync. You already have rsync installed. <clears throat> so I'm going to open that up and start the ball of wax. And um, if you are a brand new user to rsync world and you want to also know about script files, I do encourage that you watch the video in its entirety. So I'm going to make two windows, Control N. Hopefully these are large enough for you. <clears throat> and I'm going to explain this tool. First of all, I'm going to return this to default. Okay. So under default conditions, this is how the tool comes after you install it. So this is graphical rsync, grsync. Okay. rsync is remote sync. rsync is a little smarter than you dragging and dropping files. So I have a couple of devices, which I'll talk about now. I have a USB hard drive and an internal drive. These folders were automatically copied when I actually logged in. You can wipe these out and when I re-log in, it'll re-replicate these without me doing anything because I told it to do this. And I'll show you that process toward the end of the video. I, if you are wanting to learn how to do script files also, I do encourage that you watch the whole thing, the whole video. So let's talk about basic stuff first. This drive is currently empty. This is formatted with FAT32. This drive is formatted with extension 4. This is a very versatile tool. So basic options. Using the standard basic options, you can leave them as is. Okay. You can also activate a lot of these. And uh, I've been asked this question, I don't know how many times in the last couple of years, why isn't this on by default? because I like that feature. Or someone says, I don't like that feature, believe it or not. All right, do you see the black box that pop, just popped up? It says dash dash delete. You'll see that in my script files a little bit later. But I'm gonna first use the default settings to let you see what is transpiring here. So grsync is, it does one thing at a time, one source to one destination. And you can alter these actually through another setting. But let's just stick with the basics. So open, documents, open, puts the path in there. Our user for today's Dora 39. Just as good a name as any. And I could have used Bob or Mary or whatever other fictitious names that I use just to have a little fun. But more importantly, Dora 39, as in Fedora 39. Now I'm going to run this thing. And all it's doing is syncing up whatever I have in here over to here. So um, one of the things about rsync that's a little faster than you dragging, drop, dragging and dropping, as I could say, is uh, when I rerun this, it'll have nothing to do. And why is that? All it did was verify. 
because our sync is a little smarter than you drop in files because if you keep dropping files it's going to complain that it's already got the folder right and you have to delete and replace what our sync does is look at the timestamps on these files and folders or directories as we call them in Linux so if a did not change on your backup copy over here since you already hit the play button then it doesn't need to replicate and waste bandwidth and time so it says ignore however if I if I uh, edited cabbage.txt for instance and it knows that by the timestamp our sync when you hit the play button here knows this file is different from this one then it'll sync it over and then it goes to the next one and says okay has this one changed no then ignore it and this one no and all the subfolders in it it does all that in heartbeat very fast so the reason that this is off by default is because a lot of people like to have this feature i'm going to create a couple of folders i'll do a hello for and uh, we'll just take one of these and copy and paste them just to give it a couple of things to play with so now i have a hello for and this uh, copy of this pdf it's not here yet so i'm going to hit the play button so now they're a match set and if i hit the play button again it'll have nothing to do because it's exact now what happens when you delete stuff by accident well if you are syncing nothing over here it preserves the files it just keeps adding forward believe it or not that is a feature that a lot of people like but some folks do not they want this to be an exact match if you are that type of person then you want this one on delete on destination will remove files that are not here this is your master this is your copy source and destination delete on destination play button it removed those files now I'm going to give you some cautions if you decide to do this on your destination device subfolder whatever and you create files in here or folders or directories as we call them in Linux I'm going to create a test 99 here and then over here I'm going to create another folder called test 888 just to be different when I hit the play button with that command on it's going to remove that folder and also replicate this one because I told it to because it, it you're telling it to make an exact copy of this folder for folder file for file so this is now identical with that option on switching gears we can also do more of your sources one at a time pictures open sync it takes longer the first time the second time though it's fast again the initial backup takes the longest so if you decide to add a new folder and you decide to eliminate something at the same time and you replicate with that on it'll do the same in here it'll remove one JPEG and add hello world at the same time now it's finished exact match I'm going to return the file one JPEG to my pictures and re-replicate so now it's back over here match set so that's GR sync in a nutshell you can also change the destination device to your other internal drives or USB stick very versatile tool it's point and click but it's one thing at a time now I'm going to switch gears you already have our sync installed right you don't need to install GR sync if you don't want to use it but our sync is already installed so the only thing you need to make this kind of stuff work is script files so script files I'm gonna get rid of that too are written with a text editor and you have one and it doesn't matter which one it is I don't even recall what it's in here because I wrote these script files with a different system and but I edited them in here 
and I forgot what the text editor is in here, uh, is GNOME. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of some of the stuff that I was editing earlier. So we just start with a fresh. So this is the first one that I'm going to be doing, and it's gen the script file is generated toward that drive. And I'll let you see what's in here first, and then I'll discuss this in detail. Okay, I'll let you see it, and then I'll run it. So it's going to be doing uh, one, two, three, four, five folders. So this is a little bit faster and more importantly, and more efficient than GRSync. You can actually see the files being copied and you can do this with or without seeing the files. All right. And that box will close automatically when it's finished. I didn't do a thing. I wasn't clicking. So it copied one, two, three, four, five folders. So let's take this thing apart. So I will make this larger for you and talk about it in details. Uh, maybe widen it. Just right here. Okay. Is that better? All right. I don't know if you can see that. It says tilde document scripts on it. That's the location. So because I'm using tilde in here, so I want to just give you the reference in a second. So what does this line mean? Bin bash. All right, the, um, the two symbols are produced by hitting your shift key and number three on your upper row of your keyboard and also holding down the shift and number one. They produce a pound and explanation point. There are no spaces in here. Forward slash is normally found near your shift key on the right hand side near your enter. And then type in bin forward slash bash. There's no spaces in here. Your Fedora file system, there's bin right there. Okay, there's a link to it, but bin is here. So I'm gonna uh, scroll down to the B's and uh, you can also open up terminal if you have never used uh, man pages, manual pages, you open up terminal and type in man space bash and it'll give you the definition of, of that and all about born again shell. But that's the location of it. Bin bash, bin bash. If you are curious what that means. All right, the next item is when we got the bin bash statement in here and it's typed in properly, then we can start using different commands. So it's going to be using remote sync or rsync, just like grsync. The option that I'm using today is archive. There are lots of different rsync options. Now I've used rsync script files before showing this option. On some systems, it's not required to have the VH on. But on this one, I thought I'd throw that in there for you to show you that what that does. As, it, as you're copying files, you saw the terminal box come up and you saw a list of files being copied as it was creating these folders. That's what the VH does. It shows you that list. If this is off, in other words, just like that, it will just be a blank terminal box. It'll just have a cursor blinking there until it's finished and then it'll close the terminal box. So if you want to see the files being copied, you put a VH there. All right, moving along, you put one space in here, and here's where the tilde comes in. That's normally found next uh, to the left of your number one key on your upper row, and it's a substitute for this. So if I were to click that and let you see the path, it's home folder door 39, the name of my user. I don't want to type that in there. So what I do is, is I toss a tilde in there. Now the next part here, the forward slash documents, you're going to need spelled exactly the same way. So if your folder name has an uppercase in it, it needs to have an uppercase here. It needs to be identical because rsync needs to find your source. That's the source. Okay, this part here has to be literal. So home folder forward slash documents. If it's uh, got a lowercase d, then it would be a lowercase d. If it's an uppercase d, it's an uppercase d. This part has to be spelled the same way. This part does not. So what is this thing in between that sandwich here? That's the name of the drive. Run media Dora 39 USB back. You can also right click on it, hit properties and copy part of this if you like. Just don't forget to add the name of the device. Again, device could be what? USB hard drive, USB stick or an internal drive. Yes, we can do it both. 
So that's all that means. Now I added the forward slash documents. That's just a made up name and I can misspell this one, but not this one because you're creating the folder. I'm putting dash dash deletes on the ends on these ones. Why did I do that? Because I wanted to sync them up file for file, folder for folder. Let me bring up GR sync for a second. Do you remember when I had this on? Take a look at the black box. It says dash dash delete on it, just like I have it here. So that means delete on destination. That's all that means. Sync up whatever you have in this folder to this folder. File for file, folder for folder, subfolder for subfolder, or directory. Now the next line here is everything is the same except when I say pictures, I called it pics on the other end. That's that folder. Because you can rename those. You're creating these folders. These have to be already in your system because rsync needs to find them first to be able to replicate those over to this device into a folder. This one you may find interesting. Would I do that normally? No, but I did it just to have a little fun to let you see you can do it. So I took downloads and I made it a D also with the dash dash deletes. So source and destination. Don't forget the space. I've had this uh, dialogue with a couple of people before. That's not right because your script file can't discern between your source and destination with no space. I like one space. Somebody told me, well, I like two. Well, you know what? If that works for you, great. I like one. Okay, one space, at least one space that separates your source from destination. You can put as many rsync lines as you want. This is a little bit more versatile than your grsync because you can do multiple lines. You can also do multiple devices, but I'm only showing one device right now. When you get done writing this, you should always test it. How do you test this thing? I'm going to do a discard on that. Well, since I created this thing, I want to make sure that the properties are executable as a program. In other words, run as a program. If you don't, when you right click on these things, you won't have a run statement unless you do this. Then it'll give you a run. Run as a program. So after you get done, you test it out, you run it, and then you should have that effect. However many folders you have up here is however many line statements you have. In this case, one, two, three, four, five. And if I got the VHs on, it'll show me the files as I'm copying. One, two, three, four, five. I should have five folders here. One, two, three, four, five. What, was, what would happen if I was missing one? So I'm going to show you an example of um, something that does happen in real life. People misspell stuff. All right, so I'm going to delete that folder on purpose just to let you see that the script file will walk. Actually, I'll, let, I'll give it some work to do too. So I will run this. And the only thing you'll see is it'll be copying my JPEGs and into my pictures, but it doesn't create the last folder. So I have four. And you're looking at your script without an error. And you need to do some self-diagnostics. So the first thing that you should always check when you're missing something is to look at your sources. All right, as in my case, the last one didn't copy, so that should be a direct, you know, clue of something's wrong with this line. In this case, it's pretty simple to diagnose because if when I look at my original, it has an uppercase M. This is a lowercase M. It does not like that because our sync can't find that folder because Linux is literal. It wants to have your folders just like the way it's spelled. So in my case, it's easy to fix this problem by just doing that. The tail end of this thing could be anything you want. You can actually call it my junk this way because you're creating that folder yourself. This part, our sync needs to find to sync it. So I'm going to actually change two things. 
change the big M here, which will replicate because it'll find the folder and then it'll create a folder over here with lowercase my junk. Save and rerun. Okay, there's the folder right there. There's only two files and that has two files. All right. I think we're done talking about that and I will go back to my home folder and move to the next stage. This is a little bit more uh, progressive and to the folks that uh, are wanting to not do this, I encourage that you at least um, understand it. Let's put it that way. So this script file here is written where it, it's actually auto ran manually or I can run it automatically full automation through my home folder. The magic is done through the bash RC or born again shell read command. It's, an, it's a file you should have in your home folder that's hidden. Dot bash RC. I'll open it for you for a second. I have a statement in here that actually points to the file and it will auto run this thing because it doesn't have a pound symbol in front of it. All right, I'll talk about this. Again, this is a little bit more advanced concepts, but if you want to do this, that what it does is it auto replicates these folders on this drive. There's a couple things that need to happen though before you use files like that or commands like this. One of them is the drive has to be auto mounted. So let's talk about this drive for a second. And what I'm going to actually do also is manually run the file that does this job. So I'm going to wipe it out so you can see it. Okay. So that file is located right here, actually. It's right next door to this one. When you get done writing your script, you should also do this and move it into a backup folder in case um, it gets uh, inadvertently deleted. That way you'll have a copy of it. You can also change these, by the way, and rename them. That's the beauty of copying script files because it copies the attributes also, which includes this. All you got to do is change the insides and the name. Okay, so far so good? Okay, let's take this one apart. So this one will start <clears throat> with basically the same stuff, rsync, avh, whatever else. But it's uh, performing this normally during uh, login. And normally, I don't see anything happening. It just does it on its own. It won't even pop up a, um, a, a terminal box. What's different on this one is this long cryptic looking name versus this one. It says run media to our 39 USB back. This one is a mount point. It's the name of the drive itself. Okay. So the drive itself is this one. And I'll let you see the properties and that long name. This is formatted with the extension four. And more importantly, this is also has permissions of this owner. Dora 39, create and delete files. All right, I'm gonna actually open up a tool that you should have installed called Gnome Disk Utility. You may be familiar with it. If not, um, it will show you what's mounted and what's not mounted also. The stuff with the play symbols is not mounted. The stuff with the boxes are mounted like the USB drive. This is also mounted, but you can't tell by looking at it. So that symbol just tells you that's mounted. You can also do yourself a favor when you uh, do this procedure is to restart your computer and don't open anything and open up this box to make sure you got this box sitting here because you can't really tell if that's auto mounted or not after you perform this procedure and that would be that normally your drive looks like this turn that off make sure these are on if you are uh, having to format this for the first time log into your user if you want to do it this way Format, extension for, don't forget the name, and then hit next. I'm not going to format this drive. All right, but you can see that says extension for, or maybe you can't see that, it may be too small. But that says ext4, and that's under contents, it says extension for. 
So that's formatted a little differently than you. this one here. It says FAT32. FAT32 doesn't use permissions. This one does. All right, with that said, you make sure that that is like this and it will auto mount. And at the same time, I'm gonna grab a hold of this, mount point. This long cryptic name will be different on your machine. Copy. Show you why I did this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and find this script file. As you're writing this thing, the stuff I have highlighted currently is a long string of numbers, isn't it? Yeah. I'm going to hit control V. That's why I copied that. You're going to be putting this over here. And for me to type this in manually, there's a high probability that I'll make a mistake. That's why I like to copy things. And then you'll paste that in there. And once you get the first line down, you can actually take and copy the line. Something similar to that, control C. After you put that in there, I'll just put it down here below and then you can put as many of these as you want. All right, I, I know I did it out of order, but still I'll do control Z. And then I'll hit enter and then control V, enter, then control V. I know they're all the same. So it's up to you after you want to do this or retype the whole line. That's all up to you. But whatever you do, if you do a copy, you make sure that you edit these points right here. But it's better than retyping the whole thing. All right, this is the sole purpose of me just showing you that, is this part here. So this is still a same, it's still a script file and it's using the AVHs. You probably won't even see them actually when if you're using a solid state drive. Uh, you may see it on the first pass, but I don't think you'll see it on the second pass. It'll be too quick for you to see anything while you're logging in. If you're going to use the login procedure, you can also use this also as manual. So let me uh, do that. I'm going to just do a discard. So I'll go to the drive and wipe it. It's already wiped. And let's test the script file first as we run it. You see how fast that was. So that way you know it works. One, two, three, four, five folders, and you open up your script. One, two, three, four, five. If you add more rsync lines, if you got six or eight or 12 or whatever, make sure that that's what you have. Then after you know that it works, then we'll talk about automation. Okay, now let's talk about bash RC. So this is born again, read command. A lot of people have different nicknames for this too also. I'm going to get rid of some of that stuff. Actually, let me redo this. All right, so let me open this up and make it bigger for you. So the pound dot bash RC is what you're going to see at the top. This part here will be missing. So I'll just cut it out. So basically go in here and um, hit a next line down and that gives you blank space. And if you want to do this, then you can go to your home folder. Where is your file located? Keep in mind, I don't have to name uh, these things in a script folder. It could be in any folder. It could be X if you like. But find where your location of the file that works over here. So in my case, it's in my home document scripts, three dots and copy location. Click in here and paste. The only thing that's missing is the name of that file. So put another forward slash and then type in, as in my case, FED back 15, whatever the name of the file is. Okay. Then don't forget to save it. Prior to you doing all that though, I want to do a discard because I'm not editing anything. Prior to editing Bash RC, may I make a suggestion that is a very good idea to do, is to copy this before you edit it and put it somewhere. If you want to keep it with your script files and your backup script folders, that might be a good idea. So it's going to complain because I already have an existing Bash RC in here. That's a hidden file, .bash RC, right? Control H. Now you don't see it. Now you do. 
So keep that one in mind too if you're in a standard mode or hidden file mode because you can't see this file if you don't have hidden turned on. I'm just so used to using control H but anyways show hidden files. Okay, So bash rc or born again shell read command performs this action during login. When it runs this procedure, I'll open this again, and you put this in properly, the path of where your file is located, the name of your file, it'll run this because it's got no pound in front of it. Forget about the rest of the stuff. All right, so all that does is it runs the file. That file again is the same as me doing this manually. And yes, I can also do that manually. You saw me do this, I'll do it again because this drive is so quick. Done. The, that uh, terminal box that you saw pop up, you probably won't see if you're doing this in an automation mode. If you're using Bash RC with this file, I don't see actually a, a, an actual terminal box when I log in. It's not there, but it does replicate all these. Okay, let's do a recap. For some of you folks that want to use GR, Graphical R-Sync, you need to install it through Terminal. And keep in mind, you have the option of delete on destination or not, and you can pick one source, one destination at a time, including USB stick, uh, USB hard drives, and also internal drives. Yes, I can actually do this with an internal drive also. I'll abuse the drive some more because it'll just re-replicate that when I actually log back in. But I'm just going to show this quickly over here. We're going to just do pictures and I'll open up the drive itself just to let you see it. So you can see that cryptic name going across there. There we go. It's copying pictures. So yes, you can use GRSync for this also. I'm going to wipe that and um, we can also think about script files you put them in whatever folder you want you use a text editor to write these with and more importantly it needs a bin bash statement and if you want to actually see the files being copied so don't forget the VH part I'm using the archive because it's very powerful and more importantly the VH part does the displaying don't forget to check your spelling on your folders because they need to be matching because rsync can't find folders that are misspelled. You name the device, in this case, whatever that is, and you add your own folders toward the end. And don't forget if you want them to be in sync, file for file, folder for folder, you add the dash dash deletes on the end. If you don't want that and you only want it to sync forward, then you remove that. And believe it or not, that's desired by a lot of people. Don't forget the space in here. Put at least one space. As in the other person that I spoke with, uh, they like two spaces. Uh, whatever floats your boat. At least one space to separate source to destination. And don't forget, bash RC. Put, the, put a pointer to where that script file is. In this case, I have the whole path. Okay. And the beauty of using that bash RC is I don't need to edit this anymore. All I do is edit the script file here. As long as I don't move or change its name, I can add as many rsync lines and remove as many rsync lines as I want. And it won't affect the bash RC part. As long as I don't change the name of that file and where it's located. If you do, then you'll have to redo your bash RC. Thank you for watching.